Dios eens. Now, in the coming days and weeks, we will add into the sections on one hyphen heaven at all an explanation on the process of set-offs, what it means and how to conduct the various bills that are brought your way whilst the system refuses to honour their obligations by law. So when someone says to you, or claims, and often the same ones may well be the lawyers again, that because the ecclesiastical deed polls have not been honoured, it won't work, it's failed and too bad. Either way, they must honour the law. So if they want to remain parents patri, then that's fine. Pay the bills or honour our competence and honour our ecclesiastical deeds. So I want to give that to you. I know that it's still not going to be up on the site yet and I know that some of you will say, well, I need to know now. I have these bills now. It's the concept at the moment to understand what I've just said and we can move forward on that. And as we're doing with all these sections, there will be background to it. So that's what I wanted to say about set-offs and EDPs. There are some other changes on ecclesiastical deeds that we will be working at and it comes from the ongoing research that we continue to uncover in strengthening the ecclesiastical deeds. For example, it is uh, clear that the words using remove are less effective than words such as the annulment of the event, therefore the record, the annulment, just as the Vatican offers certain privileges to certain members, the right of annulment of marriage, as if it had never existed, this will be a form of words that we'll be using to refine the language on the ecclesiastical deed poll. So there is no possible way that the registrars can say, I cannot comply because I cannot alter the public or I cannot remove the public record, which is one excuse that we've seen come through. Another thing that we've been working on is the third ecclesiastical deed where it's not just simply that the registrar or the court officials are in dishonour, but that by their own laws, by their own laws, which we'll be talking about in a moment, they are excommunicated from office. Now, I know excommunicated is clearly a religious term. However, it is the correct term. When they dishonour by the third deed, they are excommunicated from office. And under that, they cannot claim to hold office anymore. So these are refinements into the deeds that we will continue. Now, in saying this, I do not want anyone to feel that this means that anything they've sent prior is deficient. Remember, it is always the intent that is measured in law and has been measured in law from the beginning and is only lawyers who seek to weasel out through words. The intent of these documents has not changed. We are merely making it clearer and removing the weaseling that we've seen already with some of the lawyers associated with the registrars so that there cannot be any further delays and excuse. So I'm encouraged by that process. One more thing about ecclesiastical deeds. There will be a set of ecclesiastical deeds that follow the ecclesiastical deed that was prepared for you all in dealing with court matters. So that just as you go through a dishonour process with the EDPs to the vital statistics, so you can also go through the dishonour process with the EDP sent to court. Now, I'm mindful of time, and it may be that we take up a bit more time in some of these subjects tonight before we get to the questions, but I will still take the time to answer all your questions. I'm now going to talk about land and the important updates that have come onto the site in terms of how to save your home. So I'm now referring to a new section 
on one-heaven.org and when you click on the All Welcome and you go to the home page, you'll see a purple box down the bottom that says How to Save Your Home. If you click on that box, uh, you'll see that there's a range of different topics there and there's quite a few. You'll see land, Tara, La Land, Lend, Udal, Feudal, Lodum, Promise, Land, Mortgage, Foreclosure, Tenancy, then a whole lot of stuff about consideration, claim, then right of land. Now there's too much to go through even in one of these talk shoes. So I ask you all to please go and have a look. At your own time, please go and have a look. So this is on one-heaven.org. Click on how to save your home and then bring this up. Now, while lawyers and prosecutors and even judges and magistrates today may not care at all the origin of land. Everything associated with land, mortgages, real property has a provenance. It has a history. It has an origin. Someone invented the word tenancy. Someone invented the word loan. Someone invented the word mortgage. Someone invented the word terrain and meets and bounds. All of these have a provenance. All of these have a history. And in understanding the history, we find the reason why things are the way they are. Now, <clears throat> more even than discussing uh, court and discussing other areas of, of assistance, I know that there has been no shortage of people out there providing what they claim to be helpful advice on how to save your home, right from putting stamps and sending off your deeds to the land titles office and standing up and saying there is no mortgage and standing up and saying that you know there's fraud. There's a whole range of things. Now, I respect that there is an enormous amount of research that people have done. And that research is a valuable resource, and I hope that we will be able to take advantage of it. What has been missing, however, is the context is a historical and legal context of why these things are the way they are. So the first purpose of how to save your home is to understand exactly how the law evolved and then went backwards and then has been partially saved and restored in terms of the rights of possession, the right of home, the right of land. These are things that, as I say, have a history. So have a look at land, Tara, La, Lend, Udal, Feudal, Alodum, and see some of that history. I'm going to talk about that quickly, and then we're going to talk about some of the practical examples of this knowledge being used to perfect two remedies here. There are two remedies, one being the claiming of your position as a tenant under a mortgage and the bank as a landlord, and then using the remedy of rights of equity and redemption to um, repay outstanding rent, and in the process also put on the record the frauds involved with the contract. And the other remedy is claiming the land, the right of land, claiming what is your divine right and seeing how that is perfected. But before we get into those, let's just quickly talk about some of the history sections that are listed up on the site. Now, I know that there will be, a, as there is, a um, scepticism that people say because they can't find, don't want to find, don't want to know. But land has an origin in terms of all concepts, whether it be the concept of an acre, the concept of private property, the concept of possession. And if we are looking for a point of origin of the land and the law associated with the land, we should look no further than the concept of land being known as Tara or Torah. And when I say Torah, a number of you who are listening to the call, a number of you who are on the call now, will probably think, well, Torah, five, five books of the Bible. And you're absolutely right. But there is a provenance in history. And I won't go too far in the history because I'm not here to 
contest people's different views of history other than to say that the word Tara and its variation Torah was the original name to describe what we now call land. And the law and the land were one. The scripture, the law, the land were one. And the law of the land was the right of possession. Now let's think about it. You hear the words possession is nine tenths of the law. But let's think about societies living in cooperation. If I did not obey or abide by the concept of possession, right of possession, then I would walk down the road and I would literally break into someone's home and claim it as my own. And if there's someone living there, I could shoot them and dispose of the bodies and that's my new home. And then, you know, there would be a gang that came on and admired that home. And when I was sleeping, they'd break in and they would knock me off and they would take over that home. Now, there are some parts of the world where possession is not respected and what I've described happens, has happened and happens. Possession is an essential component to organised society, essential. So possession in, and property here, under the law of Tara, property was called air. They did not write in those days, but they called it air, A-I-R. When it came to the time of the Romans, they called it air, H-E-R-E-S. And when we talk about land and rights today, it's air, H-E-I-R. Tara becomes terra under Latin, T-E-R-R-A, and remains a fundamental law of nations, terra, not T-E-R-R-O-R. So we find that possession from the very beginning was an essential component and the right of possession was fundamental. And when we move forward to 200 CE, we discover a, a, a king by the name of Cormac MacArt, the prototype from which the Arthur legends were born, extended this to create the concept of the acre and the concept of the plot and more importantly, the concept of terrain, of administering the land, and the concept of a survey. So the right of owning the land as a tenant, or in this case, um, uh, possessing it, was that one would walk the boundaries of their plot at least once every seven years and make sure that the boundaries were correct and if the walls were falling down to rebuild those walls. So what you walked over was terrain and what you did was a survey. And now we move to the next uh, period, which were the Roman period. Now, the Romans called land la or lares or law, if you want to give the, the probably the proper definition of the way they would pronounce it, is law. So the law of the land was the law, L-A-R, L-A-R-E-S. And the Romans, when they got going, honoured the intrinsic principle of possession. However, they wanted to degrade possession to something less than absolute ownership because the Romans wanted to control the world. They're obsessed in controlling the world. So the Romans came up with the idea of occupation. Now, I'm sure many of you have, have been confused by the words occupation and possession, and in many places around the world, occupation and possession are sometimes wrongly considered the same thing. They're not. What the Romans said was this. When a particular culture is conquered, the, a register would be created and Roman citizens, so Roman citizens were normally the elite of the conquered people and the previous Roman citizens and everyone else was then considered a slave. And occupation became the right of ownership. And occupation was a record in the register, not possessing the land. 
and it was a first in, 